Welcome back to Kitty Reads Morrow. Wait, wait, Kitty Reads? Yes, because this is Kitty Plays Morrowind Storytime. The first time we do this, I'm Kitty, I'm Nighty, the Black Panther Kitty. I am a kitty. And I'll be reading the book for this episode. And honestly, I will be doing some playing also. But first of all, we're going to read Surfeit of Thieves, written by Anis Noru. Mm, this looks interesting, said Indig, his eyes narrowing to observe the black caravan making its way to the spires of the secluded castle. A gaudy, alien coat of arms marked each carriage, the lacquer glistening in the light of the moons. Who do you suppose they are? They are obviously well off, smiled his partner Heraya. Perhaps some new imperial cult dedicated to the acquisition of wealth. Mm. Go into town and find out what you can about the castle, said Indig. I'll see if I can learn anything about who these strangers are. We meet on this hill tomorrow night. Haraya had two great skills, picking locks and picking information. By dusk of the following day, she had returned to the hill. It's a she, okay. Indic joined her an hour later. The place is called Old Olira, she explained. It dates back to the second era when a collection of nobles built it to protect themselves during one of the epidemics. They didn't want any of the diseased masses to get into their midst and spread the plague, so they built up quite a sophisticated security system for the time. <laughs> of course, it's mostly fallen into ruin, but I've got a good idea about what kind of locks and traps might still be operational. What did you find out? I wasn't nearly so successful, frowned Indict. No one seemed to have any idea about the group, even that they, even that they were here. I was about to give up, but at the Charter House I met a monk who said that his masters were a hermetic group called the Order of St. Eanua. I talked to him for some time, this fellow name of Parathian, and it seems they're having some sort of ritual feast tonight. Are they wealthy? asked Araya impatiently. Embarrassingly, so according to the fellow, but they're only at, ca at the castle for tonight. I have my picks on me, winked Araya. Opportunity has smiled on us. She drew a diagram of the castle in the dirt. The main hall and the kitchen were near the front gate, and the stables and secured armory were in the back. The thieves had a system that never failed. Araya would find a way into the... Come on. I need to be in, in game. <laughs> into the castle and collect as much loot as possible while Indic provided the distraction. He waited until his partner had scaled the wall before rapping on the gate. Perhaps this time he would be a bard or a lost adventurer. The details were most fun to improvise. Araya heard Indic talking to the woman who came to the gate, but she was too far away to hear the words exchanged. He was evidently successful. A moment later she heard the door shut. The man had charm, she would give him that. Only a few of the traps and locks to the armory had been set. Undoubtedly, many of the keys had been lost in time. Whatever servants had been in charge of securing the order's treasures had brought a few new locks to a fix. It took extra time to maneuver the intricate hafts and bolts of the new traps before proceeding to the old but still working systems. But Haraya found her heart beating with anticipation. Whatever lay beyond the door, she thought, must be of sufficient value to merit such protection. When at least the door swung quietly open, the thief found her avaricious dreams paled to reality. A mountain of golden treasure, ancient relics glimmering with untapped magicka, weaponry of matchless quality, gemstones the size of her fists, row after row of strange potions, and stacks of valuable documents and scrolls. She was so enthralled by the sight, she did not hear the man behind her approach. You must be Lady Trezd, said the voice, and she, shum she chummed. It was a monk in a black hooded robe, intricately woven with silver and gold threads. For a moment she could not speak. 
This was the sort of encounter that Indic loved, but she could think nothing to do but nod her head with what she hoped looked like certainty. I'm, 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 I'm afraid I'm a, I'm a little lost, she stammered. I can see that, the man laughed. <laughs> That's the armory. I'll show you the way to the dining hall. We were afraid you weren't going to arrive. The feast is nearly over. Haraya followed the monk across the courtyard to the double doors leading to the dining hall. A rope identical to the one he was wearing hung on a hook outside, and he handed it to her with a knowing smile. She slipped it on. She mimicked him as she lowered the hood over her head and entered the hall. Torches illuminated the figures within and around the large table. Each wore the uniform black robe that covered all features, and, from the look of things, the feast was over. Empty plates, platters, and glasses filled every inch of the wood with only the faintest spots of and dri dribbles of the food remaining. It was a breaking of a fast, it seemed. For a moment Araya stopped to think about poor lost Lady Trust, who had missed her opportunity for gluttony. The only unusual item on the table was its centerpiece, a huge golden hourglass, which was on its last minutes worth sand. Though each person looked alike, some were sleeping, some were chatting merrily to one another, and one was playing a lute. Index lute, she noticed and then noticed Indic's ring on the man's finger. Haraya was suddenly grateful for the anonymi anonymity of the hood. Perhaps Indic would not realize that it was she, and she had been blundered. Trust, said the young man to the assembled, who turned as one, as one to her and burst into applause. The conscious members of the order arouse, arose to kiss her hand and introduce themselves. Nurdla, Swalek, Kyler, the names get stranger, Tanya, Tillets, Noitrap. She couldn't help laughing. I understand it's all backwards. Your real names are Aldrin, Silius, Relic, Poignant, Stilleth, Parathian. Oh, of course, said the young man. Won't you have a seat? Say, giggled Aria getting into the spirit of the mask and taking an empty chair. I suppose that when the hourglass runs out, the backward names go back to normal? That's correct, Trest, said the woman next to her. It is just one of our order's little amusements. This castle seemed like the appropriate ironic venue for our feast, devised as it was to shun the plague victims, who were, in their way, a walking dead. Raya felt herself lightheaded from the odor of the torches and bumped into the sleeping man next to her. He fell face forward onto the table. Poor Esruok Tsrif, said a neighboring man, helping to prop the body up. He's given us so much. Raya stumbled to her feet and began walking uncertainly for the front gate. Where are you going, Trezd? asked one of the figures. This was taken on an unpleasant, mocking quality. Um, my name isn't Trest, she mumbled, gripping Indic's arm. I I'm sorry, partner, we need to go. The last crumb of sand fell in the hourglass as the man pulled back his hood. It was not Indic. It wasn't even human, but a stretched grotesquerie of a man with hungry eyes and a white mouth filled like tusk-like fangs. Haraya fell back into the chair of the figure they called Asrok Tsarev. His hood fell open, revealing the pallid, bloodless face of Indic. As she began to scream, they fell on her. In her last living moment, Haraya finally spelled Trezd backwards. Now, wasn't that an interesting story? I'm trying to find a morale here. I think the morale is never, uh, will never break into something, I guess. Um, yeah, um, for those who 
like when I butchered the pronunciation, of course, Tres is spelled T R E S S E D, so backwards it would be dessert, and S R O S R I V was the first course. Um, very interesting that story. And we find it here. We're going to take this, and we learned security skill from this book. So this definitely is going to go into our library. Well, let's look. Let's take a look what else we can find in this cave. More gold. Okay, we already searched that part. I wasn't sure of that. It seems like this basically is the end. Let's just recharge our magicka by sleeping in the hammock. Where is the downstairs? Ah, we need to cross the bridge. Okay. And of course, I'm curious. I want to know if the water will take us somewhere. I guess it's just if you fall down, you can, yeah, you can come back. Okay. I am a curious kitty. And also, ah, I wanted to clean my fur from the sand from outside. Now, with this pleasant bedtime story, I think you can all sleep well. And if you can't, you should just continue watching me. Because we are on our way to uh, Margan to find a guy who wants to be taken to Coal Cave, which is where we actually want to go. Gnesis. Well, actually, we want to go to. Um, uh, to Dagon Fell to get the Dwarven Ruins, but that's just the ultimate goal. There we go, and of course, as always, we step out into a sandstorm. I hate those sandstorms. Just clean my fur, damn it. Nope. Okay, I can't pick those plants. For some reason, I need to concentrate on aiming, and, and I thought I needed to do it all the time, else the fireball wouldn't hit. But once it's flying, you can't steer it anymore, so. Yeah. Let me have one more of these. And head on. That one was even diseased. Luckily, it didn't infect us. I want to know what these these do. Star willpower, drain strength, restore fatigue, and the razor plumes. I think is yeah, drain willpower. <laughs> Stay where you are. So we're going to head over to Margan. Yes, perfect. There is an Alet. And I don't have the magicka to cast the spell. No. Really? There we go. So the the hint for training sneak was to sneak up uh, to the these because they are um, neutral. Oh, three of them.
Luckily, the other ones don't get aggressive just because I killed killed his friends. And I'm sorry, I need to concentrate a little bit in order to pull this off, even though it is not that hard, but um, I tend to do press all the wrong buttons when I need it most. Drain intelligence, not interesting to us. There we go. This was Bal Isra. It was marked here, but I don't know what it is. I guess it is a place that we had been had given as a mark for um, as a marker for uh, a quest. A quest is what I wanted to say. It was a quest destination. Yep. Sending that one way off. I should wait until that guy is done walking. And then fail casting the spell horribly. Maybe just use one of my restore fatigues that I just made myself to increase the chance for casting the spell successfully. Because why did I make those? A Kaguti has drain fatigue. Hello there. Bye there. Uh, I guess this is the person we're actually looking for. Well, I'm going to kill you the old fashioned way, or I'm going to I use my flame stars. Increasing my marksman skill until he's down here. There we go. Hmm, no. Well, Saving. There are people here. They don't know me. They do offer training in long blade, athletics, and block. Okay. What's your background? A scout. They are a scout. Okay. Hey Khajiit, I'm Baden Giladrin, a poor pilgrim trapped by these Ashlanders. Can you get me out of there? These Ashlanders are holding me for ransom. A quest. What about that guy? Yeah, you heard right. I have the famous noble Baden Giladrin. I demand 5,000 drakes in ransom. Uh, who? Uh, what do you mean you've not heard about the famous Red Auburn noble Baden Giladrin? He's not famous. He told me that he was a famous noble of House Redor, and maybe you should speak with him. Okay. Um. Uh, what about what about you? They they told me you were a famous guy from House Redor, and I thought the Ashlanders would kill me, so I told them what I was a famous noble. I knew what was wrong, but what else could I do? Can't you afford better outfit? Really? <laughs> okay, it's, it's mismatched, yeah. Uh, listen about this fella, he actually lied to you. <sighs> so this famous noble is a liar and coward. Oh, very well, you can have him for five drakes. Honestly, I'm not going to fight them over five drakes. There you have your five drakes. 
Just release him, you know. You paid my ransom? Oh, thank you, Nighty. I'll continue on my pilgrimages on my own. Idiot. Real quick did this little side quest thingy on our way. There's the next signpost. While we are waiting for whoever is attacking us to appear. It was a nix out. And on we go. Alice. And a cliff racer. Now we're being attacked from multiple sides. And the storm is going up. So yeah, I'm, I'm mostly looking on the lower left corner of the screen to see my health and all the bars while fighting. Yeah, fighting, fighting has been completely overhauled in later games. So now I'm going to try to rest. And of course, now there are enemies nearby. Another Kaguti. For some reason, I always think Kabuto, which is something completely different. Well, then I need to break a Magicka potion. For healing purposes. So we need to go that away, I think. That away, I think. And I guess this is the person that we're actually looking for. Someone standing on the road, encircled by encircled by mobs, wild animals, who attack everything they see. Well, actually, only the player character, if they see him. Okay. Phonus Rathrion. Okay, first of all, let's drop a little quick save and try to rest. Nope. Pardon me, can you help a poor pilgrim? Of course, good sir, but first, I had to drink something. I've been trying to get to Ruddy Man, but I've lost my way. If you would be so kind as to help, I can pay you 150 septins upon our arrival. I need to get there rather quickly, though. I am on a pilgrimage, and there are others I must meet there. I must be at the muddy, ruddy man in Cold Cave within two days. Can you help? No, I'll escort you. Excellent. Let's be on our way, then. It's on the western shore, so we must hurry. Yep, it is here. So basically... We need to... First of all, kill, kill off that, that guy. We should actually kind of head over that mountain. We went on the other side of this mountain. And this means we are going to go to our gun and then head over. So we're trying to find a way to to go left. To circle around this mountain range here.
there we are. We are now in Margan and can now fast travel to Gnesis to get him where he wants. Fast travel, there is the Silk Strider service, let's get up here. Follows us. Lucky us, we can even fast travel to Gnesis directly from here. Now we're going to get to Coal Cave, which is not here, but here. So we need to, I hope you don't mind getting a little wet. First of all, look at this guy, he doesn't have any pants. And then a fun sight, the guy without pants. Yeah, he's even following me into the water, perfect. Oh, I didn't ask you if you can swim, you can swim, okay. Lucky for me, he can swim. He can swim and he can follow, that's good. So since some time passed while we were on the Silt Strider, my Magicka also has returned. So you want to go to Cold Cave, it is that way. We are nearly there. Stoneflower does what? Restore strength. Something we don't immediately need. Crush fiber. Restore luck. And here we are, the entrance of Cold Cave. So good friend, do I need to also lead you inside? No. Here is your pay payment. Goodbye. So, we help this pilgrim to get to Coal Cave. And with this, I am going to end the episode for today. And our next plan is to head north and get along the shore to find a boat that brings us to this island, which is to Dagonfell. I checked, it's the only city over there. Okay. So much for that, so much for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you tune in next time. Goodbye, and let the dice decide, decide the fate of when the next episode will air. Bye-bye.